in this video, I'm gonna show you how I roast my own coffee. I've been doing this for almost 10 years now. All my tips and tricks coming up. Stay tuned. Start out by preheating your oven to 460 degrees. There's lots of different ways to roast coffee. This is the way that I like to do it. If you want to attempt to do this yourself, the first thing you'll need is some green coffee beans. So these are unroasted, preferably organic, and they'll have them at local coffee shops that do their own roasting. If you call around, you'll find them. You'll also need some kind of a pan. Any pan will work, but over the years, I've had the most success with this guy, one of these pizza pans with the little holes in it. It roasts more evenly and I don't have to stir it part way through. A bowl with a strainer, a colander or a mesh strainer if it's a coarse mesh. This is to sift off the skin that comes off the beans called the chaff and we'll get to that later. A good quality oven mitt or oven glove to handle the hot tray and beans. And then something to store the beans in that's not airtight. Start by spreading your beans out into a single layer on your tray. How many beans you do depends. This is about half a pound and that will last me for four or five days. So I do this less than once a week. After that, spread them into an even layer using your hand. I like this donut shape because it ensures that the beans in the center roast as quickly as the ones around the edges. Flatten it out and just push in all of the stray beans so they don't burn. Place this in your preheated 460 degree oven. It takes about 10 to 12 minutes when I roast coffee in this oven, but that can vary quite a bit. It's more about listening for the sounds that cue you. The first thing you're listening for is called first crack. It sounds like this. Kind of like the sound of popcorn kernels popping. Loud, sporadic pops to start. And then as time moves on, the pops will get a little bit more consistent like this. So that is first crack and you'll hear that happen and then all of a sudden it'll start to die down, the cracks will fade away, it'll get quiet for a little while and then it'll move on to the second thing you're listening for which is second crack. And this sounds a little bit different, it sounds like a fire crackling in the fireplace. So there are much fainter crackles happening more consistently and it sounds like this. Once I hear the second crack starting, I will tend to stay near the oven. The timer will usually go off around this time. This is about 10 or 11 minutes in. And then I will stick by the oven and watch the beans. What I'm looking for in the end is how shiny the beans get. When it's at light roast, you will just barely start to see a little bit of sheen coming to some of the beans. They'll mostly be matte and light in color. Medium roast, some beans will be darker and shiny. And a dark roast coffee, all of the beans will be dark and really oily and shiny looking. This can all happen very quickly. That's why I said to keep an eye on the beans. The difference between a light and dark roast can be less than a minute in some cases. So we've reached the biggest downside to roasting your own coffee and that is the amount of smoke that is about to pour out of this oven when I open it. You do not want to open your oven multiple times. Turn your hood fan up to full blast. This is the unavoidable side effect of roasting coffee in your oven at home. Don't say I didn't warn you about this. I've been doing this for a while and all I know to do is just turn my hood fan on, get a tea towel and fan my smoke detector so it only goes off for a moment and then I'm ready to move on from there. Give the tray a shake to loosen the beans. I do this while they're still warm. You can wait for them to cool if you want to. Transfer the roasted beans into your colander or your strainer. As the beans have roasted, they expand a little bit and the skin on them or the chaff dries out and gets really light and flaky. So what I'm doing here is just kind of gently massaging the beans to break up those pieces of chaff so that they're not all over the beans. As you can see, this is what it looks like. I will then sift off all of this excess chaff. This is also kind of a pain. You can do this while they're warm or after they've cooled and just be patient for this part. It takes maybe a minute or two sifting back and forth. This colander is the best one that I've ever found. The bigger the holes, the better, as long as the beans are not gonna fall through the holes. And you'll just sift that until you get all of that light, airy chaff off of your beans. 
And there you have it, foodies, your own fresh roasted coffee made at home. This is something that's really fun to try out. You need some special tools, and yes, you will smoke out your kitchen. Yes, there's a good chance that you'll set off your smoke detector and there'll be chaff all over the stove. But if you consider yourself a coffee snob, this is definitely a must try. Fun, if nothing else, to roast your own coffee. Comment below, let me know how it turned out. Reach out with any questions in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, check out my Patreon, all that's in the description. I will see you soon.